In this video, I'm going to explain how to decode CAN data from the CAN bus using the PicoScope. The PicoScope has a great CAN bus decoder built into it. When you record the voltage signals from the CAN bus wires, you can then decode that into binary or hexadecimal code. You can also log that data and export it. And if you have any questions about how to get this data, you can refer to my other video. I'll make a link to it in the lower right corner here that you can watch. It shows you how to use a breakout box to connect to the CAN high and the CAN low wires in the OBD2 data link connector of a vehicle. Now, any car that is sold in the U.S. since 2008 and some cars that were made and sold before 2008 use CAN as the OBD2 diagnostic network. And so there will be two pins on the data link connector for CAN high and CAN low. Besides the diagnostic CAN, there may be other CAN buses on the vehicle as well, and you can also test those using this. In fact, this PicoScope has the ability to test many different types of serial data buses, and I'll show you that. So here's a recording that we took on the CAN high and CAN low bus wires. Uh, this recording was for a total of about nine seconds. I think we just plugged it in and turned the key on for a few seconds and turned the key back off, and this was the data that we recorded. There's probably not a whole lot of important data that was transmitted during that time, but you'll see there were a lot of data frames that were sent back and forth, and we can zoom in and see what we found. We'll just pick a spot here in the middle. We'll have to zoom in farther so we can see the individual data frames. You can see that here in this view, there are four data frames. The voltage of the CAN high wire idles at about 2.51 volts, and when it switches, it pulls up to about 3.5 volts. On the other hand, the CAN low wire idles at about 2.49 volts, and when it switches, it pulls down to 1.5 volts. On the CAN data bus, this is an idle state or the recessive state, and this is a dominant state when the voltage is pulled higher and lower. And the way that it measures it is by measuring a differential. You'll notice when it is idle or in a recessive state, there is virtually no difference in voltage between these two wires, but when it is in a dominant state, there are two volts of difference between the two wires. This recessive state, when the voltage is 2.5 on each wire, represents a binary one, and the dominant state, when the voltage is pulled higher and lower with a two volt differential, is a binary zero. So to analyze this, we'll come up here to the Tools tab, go to the serial decoding option, and we'll come down here and we'll create a decoder. And here are all the different options that we have in the PicoScope. These are all different protocols that are used. Of course, in automotive, the most common one today is the CAN data bus. So I'll choose CAN. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come up here and choose a channel. Now, it doesn't matter whether we choose channel A or channel B. We could set one up on each channel, but there really is no purpose for doing that as channel A and channel B are both mirror images of each other and the data is redundant. So as long as we set up a decoder on one of the channels, we can get the information we need. Now also notice on channel A, remember it switches from 2.5 volts to, to 3.5 volts. And so the threshold we're wanna, going to want to set up is about three volts. That way we know that it crosses that threshold each time the voltage switches the baud rate on our CAN diagnostics and on almost all CAN C networks is 500 kilobits per second or 500 kilobaud. That is setting it up so that this matches the bit rate of the messages that are sent out on this network. We indicate that this was the CAN high wire that we we're looking at. And I'm going to start out by using to make this, code this into binary, so zeros and ones. I'll click OK, and I'll click OK one more time. And it's decoding the data. So if we get this so that one data frame fits on the screen, we can now look down here and we can see here's one data frame, and here are all the components of it. You can see the zeros and the ones as we move across here. This first section, the orange section, is actually the identifier section, and it sets the priority of the message. The more zeros you have here, the higher the priority message. That's the way CAN works. When two messages try to go out on the bus at the same time, the message that has the higher priority actually wins out. And the message with lower priority loses the arbitration battle, and it has to be delayed and will resend again after this message is sent. There should be either 11 or 29 bits in this identifier portion of the CAN data frame. 
In this case, there are 11 bits here. This section here is not used generally. And then this purple section represents the actual data or the message that is being sent here. So this is where the message begins. We have one, two, three, four, five, six bytes of data that fit into this message. And you can have up to eight bytes in a CAN message. And in each byte, it's made up of eight bits. And then this light blue section over here is the cyclic redundancy check. This is where the message is checked against a formula. And that way, both the sending and receiving ECUs can verify that the message is identical and know that the message has no errors in it. And this yellow bit right here, the last bit in the frame, is the acknowledgement bit. And that bit was actually sent by the receiving ECU. So all of these data bits were sent by one of the ECUs out onto the data bus. And then one of the other ECUs, or maybe multiple other ECUs, acknowledged the receipt of this message by putting this last bit on here. That's what the yellow bit represents. Now, when I hold my mouse over top of this, it actually kind of breaks this down. And you can see we have the start time, the end time, we have the six bytes of data, and then we have the CRC or cyclic redundancy check. We have the acknowledgement bit, which was a zero, which means it got acknowledged. And it says that the CRC was valid and this bit stuffing is valid. Now let me show you what bit stuffing is. So anytime that you have more than five zeros in a row or more than five ones in a row, CAN chip automatically stuffs an extra bit into the data frame to verify that the circuit hasn't shorted or become open or something. It's kind of a, a check to make sure that nothing has gone wrong. So for example, right here we had one, two, three, four, five zeros in a row. But after that fifth zero, the CAN bit stuffed a one. In other words, it inserted an extra bit into that data frame. That's what this gray bit represents. They don't mean anything other than they are stuffed in there just as a check to verify that something hasn't gone wrong with the CAN bus circuit and that it can still switch back and forth. So you'll see that there are a whole bunch of zeros in a row in this data frame. And so after every fifth zero, it stuffed a bit also, if we want to turn this to hexadecimal, we can go back into our decoder again. We can edit the decoder that we set up. And we can tell that we would like to see hex. Now, if you look at it more closely, it's converted all those binary bits into hexadecimal code. If we move along, we can see that each data frame is a little bit different. Here's a message that's a little bit shorter, only had three bytes and has some zeros and then has some actual data in that last byte. The data is also displayed down here below in a chart that you can look at. If you want to see kind of a history of what's happened, you can also export this into a CSV file so that you can put it into Microsoft Excel and be able to analyze your data that way. Anyway, that's how you use the CAN decoder that's built into the PicoScope. It's a very simple and useful decoder, and it's a great way to decode the CAN data that you measure on the CAN bus using your PicoScope.